Hey YouTube, in this video, we're gonna be looking at alternatives to the 192 gigabytes that we did previously because first of all, that's a lot of memory. It's hard to get running at higher speeds. It's kind of capped at like 6,000. Today, we're gonna be looking at more practical setups. So what I mean by that is what if you just want four sticks of RAM because you like the way it looks, for example, because it fills in the build, it looks nicer than two sticks of memory. So if you wanna do that, that's actually what the reason why I want to run four sticks too on this particular computer with the MSI Gal like because it looks really good and I don't actually need 192 gigabytes or even 128 gigabytes but I'd like to max out the slots with four sticks so the best choice would be single rank dims so that would mean either four 16 gigabyte dims so that would be a total of 64 gigabytes of RAM or 424 gigabytes which would be a maximum of 96 gigabytes which is exactly what I'm going to do here with these two Expo memory kits that we've got these are Trident Z5 Neos so we're going to change to single rank the difference is the dual rank dims are much harder on the memory controller to handle at higher speeds that is the reason why the official supported speed for this kind of memory setup is only 3600 mega transfers per AMD. That's the official spec. It's the same with Intel. Intel's official supported speed for this kind of memory is also 3600. So if we drop it to single rank with this new setup, according to MSI, MSI's godlike allows for up to 4800 if you're doing 192 gigabytes of RAM. And I've been able to overclock it to 6000. But MSI also says if you're doing single rank, the maximum supported speed on this motherboard for MSI per overclocking is 6400. So that's exactly what I have here. This memory kit, link in the description below. Each one of these is a 48 gigabyte kit that runs at 6400 and it does it at 1.35 volts as seen here. So those are the timings. So this is very nice RAM because it doesn't use a whole lot of power. So it's not like 1.4, 1.43. It works at a lower voltage. So we'll be able to run all four of those. Just to kind of show the visual difference here in the Expo memory and the non-Expo memory. So Expo memory from G-Skill, if it's Trident Z5, you can see it says Neo RGB. So Trident Z5 Neo means it's Expo and it has this extra little white accent here on the design whereas the standard the older trident z5 these are non-expo kits so this is an xmp memory dim so just so you guys have an idea if you're trying to visually identify these so for example if you were buying used or something and someone's listing the product if they've got pictures of it if you see this kind of image then that means it is an xmp memory stick from G Skill, and if it's this one with the Neo labeling and the extra white accents, it is an Expo memory kit. Okay, just like with the previous video where we were doing four sticks, there's still two separate kits, so I wanna treat them as separate. So one of these is gonna go on channel A, so that'll be A1 and A2, so the leftmost and then the second memory slot, and the second one will go on the B channel the third one and the fourth one. So we do this because we want to minimize variability in the micro tolerances for manufacturing, just in case these are from man different manufacture dates, different times, they may have changed some stuff, whatever. So that's the reason why we do this. And that has always helped me get these sort of memory overclocks working correctly when doing four sticks. So that's what I recommend. Okay, once we have all the memory installed, this RAM looks a little bit cooler than the original Trident Z5s because these have that Neo white accent on them. We're gonna go ahead and power it up. You can clear the CMOS if you want, just to start fresh, but I'm gonna go ahead and experiment and see what happens if all I do is literally just change out the memory and then power on the system and see what it does. So I can see code 15, so it's doing memory training. So it did detect that there is a different memory kit installed. So that's really good. And because this is single rank, it should be much easier to train. It shouldn't take as long as it did with the 192 gigabytes because that's dual rank and that was four sticks. So that was the worst case scenario. This is gonna be much, much easier to do. Oh, 
All right, so O1. Okay, looks like it's coming up. That's pretty good. 4F, it's going to post soon. What I want to know is, is it going to tell me if it, the RAM was changed, if it detected a memory change, or if it's just going to straight up try to go into Windows at 6,000? Because that's what the memory, the previous memory kit was set to 6,000. So there's the post beep. Okay, and that's good. Okay, so it does say devices changed, CPU or memory, or CMOS has been cleared, so please enter setup. So we're going to F1, and it's going to get us into the BIOS, and now all we have to do is verify the speed. So it looks like, looking over at the right, it is still running at 6,000 mega transfers, so it did change the RAM, and that's what I mean by single rank is significantly easier to run. You don't have to worry too much about messing with the settings if you're swapping RAM. Now, if your previous two sticks was running at some insane speed, like 8,000 or something, then that's definitely not going to work. So it would drop it down probably to JDAC defaults of like 5,600 or even lower because it's four sticks of memory. But what we can do here is we can actually go into the overclocking and we can set the Expo profile, which is set for 6,400. And then I want to say, I want to let this go to that. 6400 FCL cable still stay at 2 gigahertz 1.2 VSOC all that good stuff so we're going to save yeah the voltages look good that's the correct voltage so let's go ahead and F10 after loading expo and say yes and let it do its thing okay so we're in the operating system after loading the expo profile one thing to note is it did, I left it on auto and it did set the U clock to half the M clock. So that's why it's running 1600 out of 3200. So the, the way to get that to work at the higher one to one ratio is you have to up the VSOC. And Zen Timings, this is an older version of Zen Timings, it's reporting my voltages incorrectly. It says 1.3, but it's really 1.2 because I know I manually set it to 1.2. So when I check hardware info 64, for example, down here, it does show 1.2 volts. It also shows it up here somewhere right here, 1.2 volts for the VSOC. So just keep that in mind. Zen timings, if you're using it, is not 100% accurate, particularly with the voltages. So VDDIO is also reporting wrong. This is 1.35, not, not 0.85. Uh, but that's basically it. We, all we did was load Expo after getting into the BIOS, after installing that memory, and then this is what it came up with, which is totally normal because the BIOSes are programmed to automatically go to gear two mode when the memory is above 6,000. So anytime the three gigahertz barrier is crossed, in this case, we're running 3.2 gigahertz on M clock, the U clock will get cut in half automatically. Now you can manually set it to U clock equals M clock, but just know that that typically is going to require a higher VSOC voltage, somewhere around 1.25 volts to 1.27 volts for most CPUs. And if you're unlucky, you have to go all the way up to 1.3. And if you can't get gear one mode to run stable at 1.3, then you're pretty much out of luck and you're better off setting your memory to either 6,000 or 6,200 or basically a lower speed. So I hope you guys found this video useful. And that is how to run four sticks of DDR5 at max capacity on single rank DIMMs for ease of use and the visual styling. Once again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.